Okay, uh, welcome everyone to our another session of NL seminar. Today's guest is Manling Lee. Uh, she's a fourth year PhD student at Computer Science Department of UIUC. Manling has won uh, Best Demo Paper Award at ACL20, the Best Demo Paper Award at NACL21, CL Dave and uh, Jane WS Liu Award, and has been selected as a Mavis Future Faculty Fellow. She's a recipient of the Microsoft Research PhD Fellowship. She has more than 30 publications on knowledge extraction and reasoning from multimedia data. So let's welcome Manling for this uh, talk here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you Lee, for the introduction and thank you for Jomei and Marjorie to invite me. So I'm very happy to be here to talk about my work on event extraction and reasoning. Um, so basically, uh, we human uh, are facing events every day and uh, our memories can be regarded as the repositories of events because basically we are talking about events in our daily life and we are getting overwhelmed by all kinds of information so event extraction uh, is a fundamental step for us because we are trying to automatically extract the event structures like who, what, where, when, uh, and then we can understand this kind of information automatically. As a result, we want machines to uh, mimic a human to uh, uh, go through this process. For example, when we see a lot of news articles and images about the Yellow West protest uh, in, in 2018, our natural question will be, uh, what happened? So actually, firstly, we are trying to do even typing in, in this case. Uh, as a result, we will find that there will be announcing event, a protesting event, and uh, there will be uh, a lot of closing event. After that, we want to know more details about these events, like uh, who, where, when. So this is the structure level prediction. Um, in detail, we are trying to extract the arguments of events. Like each argument is an entity uh, that's playing some, uh, so, some role in this event. For example, uh, in, this, uh, in this closing event, uh, Louis Museum is the closing target. And this event uh, has a start time as December 6th. And also in this uh, example, the images play some important role and can provide useful information. Especially, uh, we can see the instruments that protesters are using from images, like the banners, and some of them are using some like uh, high pressure water. And the, some of them are also doing uh, violent events like setting fire. So as a result, we need to jointly extract events from multimedia data so we can get a comprehensive understanding by merging the arguments and events from two modalities. Um, after getting the basic information, maybe we will uh, uh, get some other uh, questions about what will happen next. For example, uh, we were wondering whether Versa Palace will also be closed. In order to do this kind of prediction, we need to put events together and check them in a global view. Uh, for example, events are connected through arguments. Like here, uh, the person announced the text is the president of, president of France. So the protests are actually happening in, happening in Paris, which is the capital of France. Another connection between events are temporal relations. For example, the announcing event happens before protest, and after that, a lot of place will be closed. So if we want to predict the closing event of Versailles Palace, we may need to figure out these temporal dependencies between these events, and also consider the argument connections, like the uh, physical relations between the Versailles Palace and also other, other places like Louis Museum. Uh, as a result, events cannot be understood individually, but need to use a global view. So we, uh, in this work, we check the entire event graph and capturing the inter-event connections. Um, however, traditional event extraction is text only and uh, uh, only focus on local structures. So for example, it's a structure prediction task, including the trigger extraction and argument extraction. In this sentence, uh, we can extract the fire and also the uh, die event. Uh, and for this event, uh, we can extract the arguments that participating into it. 
like the uh, for the diamond, the victim is the cameraman, and the place is Baghdad. I also it, it focuses on this kind of local structures of each event. So uh, every event is understood individually, and there is no reasoning on how these events are connected together. Like. Uh, for the diamond and the fire event, the victim of the diamond is the target of the fire event. This kind of global knowledge about event connections is ignored in previous work. In this case, in traditional event extraction, all arguments from images will be missing and uh, we actually found more than 30% are missing. For example, the stretcher will not be explicitly mentioned in the images. And with a large number of events appearing every day, we really need to figure out the connections between historical events and try to discover some knowledge about the event evolution so, so that we can use this kind of knowledge to help predict the future events and also get the human activities. Um, so as we mentioned, nowadays we are facing two challenges. Um, the first challenge is a multimedia challenge. We need to break the barriers of two modalities on even structure understanding. Uh, however, there is a large gap between the uh, text and the vision modalities. Our idea is to impose the even structural knowledge to uh, vision language pre-training so we can get a common space for these two modalities and use it uh, to do event extraction. And another thing is trying to figure out the connections between events. So we propose to construct a global event graph and uh, try to induce knowledge of inter-event connections on this global graph. Uh, like after attack event, there will be arrest event and the attacker will be uh, arrested. So this event structure knowledge is very helpful for downstream tasks because events is the core information that we are interested in. And uh, uh, a lot of downstream tasks will contain this kind of event understanding. Like in news QA, we just show uh, about the uh, yellow vest protest. And also we can do some summarization tasks to figure out what structure is the most important. Like in this timeline summarization, we want to get the key dates and a, a short summary about the events happening on that key date. We also make some demos using the event structure knowledge. For example, we can do event searching and recommendation. Uh, the inter-event connections can help us to recommend events. For example, uh, we can know which event is similar to the current event because they have some kind of argument connections and also can provide some details about the events using the images. And we also uh, can track events uh, along a timeline or trying to put them into a heat map. So my work uh, will contain two main parts about how we tackle the two challenges about multimedia and the global connection problem. Then we will briefly go through some downstream tasks about how to apply the, uh, this structural knowledge into real world applications. So uh, for the event extraction in the vision community, there's some work uh, trying to do it, but there's a large gap between the text event extraction, uh, especially the events are about physical actions like, uh, climb, uh, like jumping. Uh, and the, this work, um, uh, these kind of events actually are not newsworthy events. And the, this line of work didn't take two modalities together for drawing the extraction. As a result, we propose a new task called multi multimedia event extraction. The input will contain two modalities like the news articles and the images. And the output should be merged from two modalities like the, uh, this event. It not only has the trigger from the text side as deploy, but also has the image as the uh, trigger of the event. And ar arguments also come from two modalities. Like from text side, we can get the agent and destination. But from the image side, we can get the vehicle. So the key challenge of this task is to project this uh, information into a common space uh, and build the connections between text and the images. Uh, as a result, we can treat the image as a foreign language, and we can find that there are multiple level elements between them. Like the sentence can be aligned to image directly and a word can be aligned to image regions. But previous uh, multimedia pre-training only focused on this 
to simple levels. They didn't uh, try to capture the structures of tumor dietase. So in our work, we are trying to uh, impose the event structure knowledge to bridge the tumor dietase. As a result, uh, we have two questions to uh, build this kind of multimedia pre-training models. So the first is how can we extract the event structure knowledge? Uh, what we did is that uh, we take advantage of tax IE tools because uh, the research of event extraction in tax in NLP is much more advanced compared to CV community. So we try to transfer the knowledge of the tax side to supervise the event understanding in the image side. And the second question is how to encode uh, both semantics and the structures of events. So uh, let's come to the first question to understand the semantics of the event types and argument, argument roles. Uh, we design a contrastive learning framework to learn the visual language pre-training models. So a good thing for us is that we, uh, in the news data, uh, the images and the caption should also, should always come with the uh, uh, similar information describing the similar story. So uh, we can assume that the events extracted from the text set can use to uh, describe the event in the image set. As a result, we use text IE system to get the event structures. For example, given the caption here, we can extract the transport event and we can know uh, the protesters as the agent and the uh, injured man is the transported entity, is the entity being transported. So we treat the tax event as the positive event for the images. Uh, and for uh, another question is how to generate the negative examples for the image to uh, learn this semantics of events. So we uh, manually, uh, so, so we manipulate the uh, event structures to uh, generate some hard examples for images. For example, uh, we can manipulate the event type. Here we uh, sample some uh, hard example from the confusion matrix. So we can see that the arrest event type, uh, its visual feature are quite similar to this kind of transport element uh, because it's all about a lot of people are surrounded some people in the middle. So we can sample the arrest event as a hard example. And for the argument sampling, we because each event has multiple arguments. So what we did is we do a red shift on the arguments uh, se sequence. So we can see that here the injured man uh, be promoted to the first argument and the protesters are put, uh, protesters are put into the last place as the instrument argument row. So uh, if there's only one argument in the example, we also sample the negative argument rows using confusion matrix to get the uh, hard examples. Uh, then we are using some predefined prompt functions to translate these event structures to natural language sentences so that uh, we can get the uh, text sentence and also have the uh, image to do the contrastive learning. So for prompt here, we have multiple different prompt functions. Uh, the first one is uh, trying to use some templates, manually defined templates. So this is from actually AIDA ontology that um, each argument can be directly uh, organized into some sentence. And then we uh, try to add the argument, argument role into this sentence. For example, this arc one should be the agent. So we want to add this kind of information. As a result, we propose the compo compose the template. Like uh, we directly say uh, the agent is the arc one. And um, there's also some research about continuous prompt showing that uh, it also has some good performance. So we are also using this, uh, trying to do some experiments using continuous prompt, just uh, use some learnable tokens to concatenate all the event structures. After that, uh, we, uh, we are thinking that all these templates and the prompt are not a natural sentence. And the uh, clip shows a better result on the natural sentence. So the sentence is more natural, the performance will be better. As a result, we are trying to generate some natural sentence. Uh, so we try to use uh, caption 
editing, so just the trying to replace the event triggers or try to switch the arguments. Another way is trying to use GPT-3. So for GPT-3, uh, we, our goal is trying to take this uh, event structures and uh, we want to uh, generate some sentence. For example, for this event structure, the event type is transport person. And we know uh, the agent is the protester and the uh, uh, entity being transported is the injured man. So GPT-3 will generate a sentence like protesters transported the injured man uh, with a stretcher. So this is a, a instrument role. As a result, this GPT-3 is trying to generate some concrete sentence uh, that con um, containing the information from these event structures. So what we did is that we use uh, five uh, manually uh, curated examples uh, as the few short prompt and then concatenate it with the input uh, event structure and ask GPT-3 to output this kind of sentences. Uh, it shows a pretty good result. So this uh, uh, prompts in the table are actually the um, actual output from the GPT-3. Uh, after we get the natural language descriptions, uh, we can encode them into the text encoder and the vision encoder and uh, optimize uh, that text encoder and encode, uh, vision encoder to uh, distinguish the negative descriptions from the positive descriptions. So this is quite similar to uh, clip model. And our uh, optimization is based on KL divergence because we may have multiple uh, positive descriptions. And the uh, another, uh, so previous design is mainly about understanding the semantics of event types and argument roles. Another uh, knowledge we just talked about is the event structure knowledge. So to better encode the structures, uh, we use um, graph level alignment instead of some node level alignment directly. For graph level alignment, we adopt the uh, widely used uh, optimal transport method. So we just calculate the cost matrix using embedding, uh, using embeddings from two modalities and then optimize the transport plan using core algorithm for uh, we use uh, 50 iterations. So this is uh, trying to use the optimal transport to calculate the graph level alignment score. And after that, we can uh, use this score to replace the simple score that just uh, of the clip. So clip just use the uh, dot product of two vectors. And we are trying to use this kind of graph level alignment score. Um, so this is our a model to do the vision language pre-training using event structures. And the entire model don't need any annotations. Uh, we only need the image caption pairs. Uh, so uh, because our work is focusing on event uh, knowledge, so we are trying to get some image caption pairs that containing uh, event uh, that are rich in event knowledge. So we collect uh, image caption pairs from news websites because news websites are mainly describing events. And uh, we extract the events from captions. Um, this data set is more challenging uh, because the sentence is much longer. For example, we can see the average sentence length is around 30 compared to the previous work uh, around 10. And uh, for the uh, event extraction result from captions, we can uh, we also rank the uh, event types we extracted using free using frequency. We can see that the transport event and the, also some meet event, demonstrate event are the do dominant events. So uh, these events are actually vision detectable. So these events are mostly presented in the images. Uh, that's why we think uh, this data set actually can work well for our um, task. And the, uh, Next, I will introduce how we can use this pre-trained language model to do some tasks like the zero-shot event extraction. So uh, because our 
uh, launch uh, our pre-training is based on the matching between the text set and image set. So the uh, extraction task is also simplified to the matching between the uh, event type descriptions and the argument row descriptions. For example, given the image, if we want to extract its event type, we will have multiple type descriptions like uh, for transport person, the description will be an image of transporting person. And uh, we will rank all the text descriptions so that we can select the highest one as the predicted type. And for the argument rows, it's quite similar. So we will uh, rank the object, uh, we will rank the argument rows for each object. For example, for this person, we can get the uh, embedding uh, from the uh, vision encoder, and then we can rank the argument row descriptions with this embedding. One exciting thing is that uh, our zero shot um, uh, event extraction extractor, uh, event extraction uh, model actually performed better than the state of the art, state of the art supervised model. So this. Uh, shows that our model can handle the unseen events and also can predict the arguments and understand uh, who is like doing, uh, who is the agent and uh, who is being, in this example, who is being arrested. Uh, sorry, can I ask a quick clarification question? Sure, sure. Um, so, uh, am I understanding correctly, the multimedia event extraction itself, that task is a novel task that you're introducing, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and the, and the structure of the task is that some of the slots are filled by images, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe I missed it. How do you actually create the gold data? Oh, we do the manual annotation. Uh, so uh, when we create the data, we 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 firstly collect some VOA news data, and for the news articles, we annotate the text event as uh, traditional annotators do. And for the image side, uh, what we did is that uh, we present the image to the annotator and ask them to annotate the event type. And we also uh, this annotation tool can also uh, tag the bounding box. So for each row, the annotator will give a bounding box, but uh, there are two kinds of bounding box actually. So if, uh, for example, in this arrest event, uh, the person here is very, uh, there's only like several person and we just annotate each bounding box. But if there's a protest event, like there are multiple person, like hundreds of person, then we will just annotate some union bounding box. So just one bounding box for all the protesters. So this is how we annotate the arguments for images. So is the annotation done at the sentence level or the document level? Uh, document level. So the image annotation is done per image. And for the text side, we, um, the text side uh, is still annotate sentence by sentence, but uh, we, um, we just present the entire document to the annotators to, to, to a same annotator to do the annotation. Uh, they say, like, is you know, basically, if this event is being described in is is present in the image, then include the uh, the image annotation. Uh, yeah. So, so this uh, co-reference between image and the sentences is done by a uh, document level. So we will yeah. check. Uh, so what we did is that in that uh, image annotation tool, we can uh, tag uh, the text event. ID. So, so text event is annotated first. And the, when we are checking image, we will um, annotate which text event can be aligned to this image event. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, one more question. So how many images can there be for document? Can there be zero images or is it always one? Um, so when we select the document, we only uh, include those content at least one image, but the average image number is around three to four. So, uh, for example, we have uh, we annotated twenty, uh, not 200, 250 documents, around two hundred and fifty documents, and the image number is around uh, one thousand and ten fourteen, I think. So it's average. There are four 
images each document. Okay, thanks. So, so far you have been using text encoder and visual encoder. Can you tell what kind of visual encoder, like is it some pre-trained model you use or do you train one yourself? For uh, encoding the image, you had an encoder for, for visual encoder in your previous diagram and then mm -hmm. text encoder, is it BERT or something else more concretely? Uh, so, we, uh, so this pre-training is done on top of clip. So this text encoder is from clip text encoder and the video encoder is clip video encoder. Got it, okay, thanks. Yeah. So uh, we also try to compare between the different prompt functions. Like we mentioned, we have five uh, prompt functions and we found that the GPT-3 has better result. I think this uh, makes much sense because GPT-3 actually is trained from a large uh, scale of data set and uh, uh, maybe it encodes some external knowledge in its model. So if we are using GPT-3 doing prompting, then uh, it's actually borrowing the knowledge inside the GPT-3. And for uh, this model, we also try to test, uh, evaluate on some general tasks like, uh, and downstream tasks like image retrieval. So we have this uh, very new data set that we collected, added. So this data set is more challenging. And we can see that uh, if we compare to the vanilla clip model, the uh, improvement on the viewing news is that it's larger. And we also test, uh, we also try to test the model's performance on some down, some uh, real world downstream tasks. So we select two kinds of tasks, uh, downstream tasks that is more uh, that is more similar to a real world application. So. Uh, visual common sense reasoning is um, uh, different from VQA, like uh, VQA contains more naive questions about the colors and also the uh, things presented in the image, but uh, visual co common sense reasoning is more about the events happening in the image. And for um, beyond uh, the visual common sense reasoning data set, there's another task called the visual commit. So they are using the same set of images. Uh, video, com video commit just trying to add the temporal dimension into the event reasoning. So it will contain three dimensions. Like for this image, uh, it has the person uh, showing the person is trying to escape the, from the water and the, this uh, blue box trying to show what the person is thinking at the current moment. And this yellow box trying to uh, predict what the person thinking before this uh, image event. And the, the green box is trying to predict the future, future events. Uh, in our downstream task, uh, task evaluation, we only did the zero shot evaluation because uh, we are trying to prove the, uh, that the pre-training can work. So we didn't want to include all kinds of complicated uh, task specific design. Therefore we are using zero shot uh, setting to do the evaluation. And what we did is to uh, make this uh, task to a retrieval task. So it's like for the image, we will retrieve the answers from the very common sense reasoning. So for example, if the question is, uh, why is the person pointing to another person and there will be candidate answers. We, we just concatenate the question and the answer as the text and to uh, ask the model to rank between these uh, different candidate answers and select the uh, top ranked answer. For video comment, what we did is similar. So uh, we have, different intent. So this is just the future event or previous event uh, we are trying to predict and just uh, concatenate with some input uh, events and do the ranking. Uh, we can see that on zero shot setting. So our model also outperformed the vanilla clip and also the clip pre-trained on news. There are some examples show why. So uh, this is the example from video common sense reasoning task. And this question is about why person uh, this this person is attacking this person. So the answer, uh, if we look at the answer, only the last one is about beating. So from the event level matching, we can directly know that the 
uh, last one is the correct answer. And also for the rationale prediction, it's similar. So if we do the event level alignment, then we can easily find that the second answer is the correct answer. So event knowledge actually is super useful in supporting downstream tasks. Uh, next, I will try to introduce the uh, how, how we can induce the global knowledge when we are looking events into a global view. So previous work simplifies the relations between events into some direct links, like the temporal orders or causal relations. But temporal orders can be between every event and the causal relations actually has low internal data agreement. As a result, uh, we propose that it's actually a graph structure that connecting two events. Like in this uh, example, the person will transport to some place to attack it. So the, uh, like, and also he, he will transport some like troops to that place first, and these troops will be the attacker. So uh, the connections will be uh, the artifact being transported is the attacker of the attacking event. And this kind of complicated construct, uh, Connection patterns are what we are trying to discover. So this is a collaboration work with Jomain and also uh, Queen Chof and uh, Nate Chambers and uh, Claire Ross. So to discover this kind of uh, complicated connections, uh, we try to uh, firstly uh, use some path discover models to um, describing how one event can be uh, connected to another event using the arguments. For example, this attack event, uh, the attacker is some country, and this country is transporting like weapons or other troops into that place. So this uh, country is also the agent of the transport event. So this is uh, the path, event event path, that's showing how the events are connected through arguments. And we treat this path, path as a um, sequence. And then we are trying to use some language modeling methods to learn whether this path is semantically coherent and whether this path is uh, frequent in the historical data sets. And the, uh, this path language model uh, is super useful in supporting like IE tasks because um, it can provide the external information showing how two events are connected. For example, in this input sentence, the traditional state of art IE model didn't extract that the troops are located in Baghdad. But as we just mentioned, there are some um, parties that can be selected, like uh, the person uh, should, uh, will be transported to that place to attack that place. So this person will be located in the transported place. As a result, we can add this relation back. However, this is just the uh, two relations, uh, two, two events. And uh, we are trying to uh, model the complicated interactions between multiple events. So if we have multiple events, uh, the natural thought is just trying to extend the path language model to event language model. Like we are trying to model after attacks, there will be arrest event, and after arrest, there will be like sentence event. Uh, however, the simple event language model cannot capture the complex event structures of events. As a result, we propose the event graphs uh, complicated event graph schema. So this is trying to add the uh, temporal dimensions and also the argument uh, connections together into a, a comprehensive event schema. For example, this is the event schema of car bombing complex event. And uh, uh, if someone wants to perform the car bombing, it will first learn how to do that. And after that, it will buy the materials of the bomb. And also maybe he need to buy a car and then he will transport the materials and the car into the same place to assemble the car bomb. And then uh, maybe drive that car to some place to attack people. And this, uh, this kind of schema can be induced uh, directly from a lot of instance graphs, for example, uh, if we want to induce the schema of car bombing event, we can collect a lot of 
uh, car bombing specific events like the car bombing event happening uh, last year in some specific place from Wiki Wikipedia pages. So after we get a lot of Wikipedia pages about different car bombing events, we can get a lot of different uh, instance graphs and then we can learn some graph generation model trying to formulate this uh, process as the like schema is the hidden hidden knowledge to control the generation of these instance graphs. For example, uh, given the um, die and attack event, uh, there will be the next event might be a rest event. And we also try to uh, predict the argument connections like uh, this person uh, is being arrested. Maybe it should also be co-referential to the person that who is doing it attacking event. So if it's the co-referential event, then we are trying to use the copy mechanism to copy this node directly from the existing entities. And if it's a new entity, we will create a new one. Uh, so for after uh, we extract the arguments and the argument relations, we will try to predict the temporal orderings between events. We put it as the last step because we think even temporal, even temporal ordering maybe um, it can benefit from the uh, extraction of the argument relations and the argument connections. Uh, sorry, can I ask a clarification question? Yeah, yeah, sure. So for the previous graph, node and age prediction, you can you use a ground truth. Does that human generated age or it is a use an off the shell extraction models. Yeah, so uh, uh, I think your voice is a little low in, in the middle, but I think your question is about uh, whether I use the automatic extraction graph and why I didn't use the like annotated graph, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, so, so we also um, think about the annotated graph and the, the problem is that um, the annotated uh, so I'm not sure whether you can see this page, actually. <laughs> this is uh, hidden from my previous slides. So this is trying to show the information extraction performance. Uh, and the, uh, we can see that um, the performance is uh, not like so good to uh, get everything right, but we can get some knowledge from this, uh, from this automatically extracted system. And uh, we, our, uh, assumption is that if we have a lot of data, then we can discover knowledge from uh, this noisy output. So we didn't use the annotation because if we want to uh, learn this schema in a graph pattern, then we need a lot of instance graphs, but the current annotated data didn't have this kind of graph because our graph contain like even temporal orderings and also the um, argument connections and argument relations. So this uh, this graph, I think, is more comprehensive than the previous uh, schema induction corpus. So this graph is actually um, very hard to do the annotation. Another thing is that um, this graph, the number of graphs we need to do the uh, schema induction is very large. So this introduces another difficulty and the. Uh, 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 another reason is that um, because this schema induction model, we want to make it data driven. So whenever there's uh, some new domain like the COVID-19 um, pandemic, if we want to induce some schema about the pandemic, then we may need to directly induce the schema from all the news data. So uh, it's not applicable to just use the annotated data. I see, I see. I'm just curious about just like what will be the effect of using a manually uh, annotated graph versus a generate, just like automatic generated and just like want to see the difference or in the comparisons. Oh, uh, so I, I didn't report the difference in this, uh, in this slide, but uh, I tried that because uh, I tried to use ACE and the uh, automatic results from ACE. Um, but for ACE data, I think the induced schema didn't make much difference because um, if you are trying to extract the 
th this kind of pattern man knowledge, um, the frequent pattern will uh, reoccur a lot. And uh, if you make some like mistakes, um, it's more like um, the relative ranking is still that the uh, recurring patterns will be higher than uh, uh, like not not uh, not ceiling patterns. So so if you use the clean graph, the ranking will be uh, quite similar to the ranking you use the no noisy graph because you are trying to use the uh, like it's kind of trying to um, learn the frequent patterns compared to not frequent patterns. So it's the uh, relative difference that matters in the corpus. So <laughs> I see. So so can I interpret us? So if the given graph is more diverse, then actually you can get a more bet, slightly better results. Do you mean this? Um. So actually, if the graph is um, uh, um, if the graph are quite similar, then you can get better results. But uh, if you use diverse uh, graph, I think the um, relative ranking will still quite similar. But uh, it's just the relative. Um, so so I, I mean the difference between the recurring patterns. And the difference between like the pattern only appear one time um, will still hold in the noisy data, in the diverse data. So that's why you can discover the recurring patterns even if the data is noisy. Oh, okay, I see, I see, got it. Oh, yeah, thanks. so it's more about the ranking, the relative ranking, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so uh, we, we test our models on two data sets. One is from LDC and another one is from uh, Wikipedia. And uh, when we do the evaluation, there are two uh, evaluations. One is the intrinsic evaluation to directly compare the induced schema with the ground truth. And in this uh, comparison, because we are trying to do graph level comparison, so we have different uh, metrics like the even node matching and the sequence matching of uh, different lengths. So this is trying to find the event sequence like after attack, there will be arrest event. So this is a two length sequence. And uh, after arrest, there will be sentence event. So there will be uh, like three hop. Like, so this is a length of three even sequence. And we also have connection matching. So connection matching is more like uh, whether two events are connected using some arguments or it's uh, it didn't have any connections. And we also try Wait. to... Mm -hmm. Sorry, what, what do you mean by a ground truth schema? Like uh, the, so the, the uh, LDC doesn't actually define schemas, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So... Uh, uh, Wikipedia? So for LDC schema, uh, what I did is that uh, it has the schema profile. So that schema profile lists the steps of the topic. And the, there's around the, like six to seven steps in average for each profile. And the, we just use that. So each, each step, it will contain multiple human types <laughs> in LDC schema. So it, it may said uh, there will be protest and uh, uh, or some like get, uh, gathering is still protest or some like meeting event or some uh, public speaking event. So uh, for each step, it has multiple uh, possible event types. And as long as we match one, we will con consider our prediction is right. And for the LDC schema, uh, sorry, for the, L uh, for the IED schema, we just uh, manually annotate the schema. So that's the schema we submitted for our evaluation. So this is our LED schema is exactly graph structured schema. And uh, it has the, uh, it, it has one even type for each node. So the comparison will be, I think, more stricted in this IED corpus. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we can see that the uh, intrinsic evaluation um, 
so there's still a gap between the matching of the schema map, a uh, schema graph, and the uh, ground truth schema. So, uh, like the event node matching is only around the fifty percent, and uh, um, I think uh, so. Based on my <laughs> ongoing work, the problem is mainly about the instance graph is not quite um, similar to the schema graph that we a human will construct it um, because some events in the instance graph may not um, expl explicitly mentioned like uh, in, in some instance graph it will um, not have the like background event introduction or something but for the ground truth human schema we will include everything from human knowledge so I think the um, this gap between these two kinds of data set. And we are thinking maybe we need to uh, do something else. Like we should not induce the entire schema from the entire even, uh, instance graph directly, but maybe we should use multiple view tracking. So <laughs> if we uh, check the subgraph of some main characters, then this subgraph will be much cleaner and then uh, if we can learn a lot of um, subgraph from different characters, then we merge the schema graph across these main characters. Maybe the performance will be better. So this is some like uh, work we will explore in the future. And for this schema, I think the good side is that this is a probabilistic schema, so it can perform good on the event prediction task. Um, even prediction task is basically what we learn this model. So uh, for each uh, existing graph, we are trying to predict the next event. Um, so it's just the, the graph generation process in our model. As a result, uh, our model can perform much better than the human schemas. I think this is mainly because human schema is more comprehensive, but uh, it's uh, it cannot condition on the existing graph. Um, for example, in this um, example, these uh, solid nodes are the nodes of the existing graph, and these dotted nodes are the future events that we want to predict. So uh, for human graph, uh, human schema, it may predict the sentence event because uh, sentence event always happen with attack event. But in this uh, existing graph, it actually didn't mention anything about uh, like justice and the uh, trial hearing or some uh, arrest event or this kind of thing. So in our graph, uh, in our probabilistic model, we can predict the um, related events conditioned on this existing graph, but human schema just include the wrong information because it cannot condition on the existing graph. So next I will talk about the, <laughs> briefly talk about some downstream tasks. So uh, just trying to show how even knowledge can support downstream tasks. Like uh, if we have a lot of news data, maybe we want to summarize a timeline and this timeline summarization has a, uh, the, the, the challenge is more about the input document size. So we may have thousands of documents for a timeline. As a result, if we can con construct the event graph from the input corpus, then we can have a graph level um, compre compression model to just directly select the salient event to keep the salient information. And then we can use this subgraph to generate the timeline. So this is how we translate the large input document into some graph and then do the graph level compression. And this compression is uh, done by uh, optimal transport because uh, optimal transport will co consider the global context of the graph and uh, when it do the uh, optimization, it may have the subgraph that is more close to the input graph. And uh, from the result, we highlight the events in the timeline. We can see that our events uh, is much more than the number of our events is much more than the baseline timelines. Another application may be using uh, this event knowledge to 
uh, create some QA data set. So for example, if we want to ask the question about the image, uh, then if we want to um, make some informative question, we can get the IE graph first and then try to create the uh, question for some specific IE node, or we can use some visual features to help with the question prediction. So this is trying to use the uh, structure knowledge to help with the uh, QA dataset creation. And we also have some uh, open source system, like this is a collaboration work with Marjorie, and we welcome everyone to use uh, this system if you need the event graphs. And uh, we also try to apply to the COVID literatures, and this KB also has been downloaded for more than 1,000 times. Uh, in the future, my work will uh, mainly focus on like open world multimedia human extraction. Maybe you try to use some visual prompt learning. And uh, maybe for the Kairos project, uh, we can try to encode the visual features into the schema induction process. And in the uh, downstream task level, we, we can also explore more about how to use human knowledge to support real world applications. Yeah, this is my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Let's see if we have any questions. Okay, so if anybody has questions, please um, either raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask. So I wanted to start. Um, so thanks. It was a really nice talk. Um, that wide ranging over many different uh, intriguing topics. Um, I want to ask you a question that's kind of like cuts at the maybe the the the, the prior uh, assumption, which is that um, uh, it's important to uh, look at multimedia when trying to extract. Um, events to get a sense of the world. Um, so if we limit ourselves at least to news articles, uh, I believe, right, you used captions quite significantly in order to try to bootstrap things. And so I wonder, in a realistic scenario, um, can you, how far can you get by just using the existing captions that accompany uh, images? instead um, of the images themselves. Uh, so you mean that uh, if the input is the image and the caption, uh, the, the event we got compared to the input is the image only? Well, what I mean is if you're trying to extract all of the events uh, and under schemas or the events, whatever, uh, from a, a news article. And what you have is the text of the article and mm -hmm. the images and the captions. Uh, if you leave off the images and just use the text of the article and the captions, like mm -hmm. what percentage of the way can you get, given that, you know, there's, I mean, there's noise everywhere, but there's quite heavy noise in the image mm -hmm. part. And like, can you get almost everything from the captions and the rest of the text? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think it's mainly about, um, so if, uh, if I show this example, uh, sorry. <laughs> so, so this example is mainly about uh, the instrument. So when we are checking the um, news articles, we found that the, uh, the most information that image provided is about some detailed like instrument or some, uh, I think uh, it's more like the visual features of the person, like uh, when I check examples, if the person is a soldier uh, or um, what kind of uh, instruments that the person is used to attack other people. Um, and uh, I think this kind of information, um, so if we use the existing ontology from AIDA or Kairos, the information gain is, uh, not much. I think uh, especially um, image can only provide the instrument level information. And uh, um, I'm thinking that if we can uh, do open world event extraction, then um, we should try to attach some like video and attach some attribute 
to this event, like um, Mm. For example, if uh, someone is voting and then uh, there's a soldier beside that person, then this soldier actually plays some role in this voting event. I think he's kind of like a supervisor, but this voting event in our current ontology uh, didn't have this supervisor role. So this information is more about some additional information uh, that didn't fit in the current ontology. So if we directly apply this kind of method into AIDA or Kairos project, we always see that the information gain is very small and we can only like maybe most the information extracted from the images are uh, have, has been already extracted from the text set. So uh, another example is that if someone is, um, uh, I think there's a protest event and there's uh, flags from two countries. So this flag information also can show the, uh, like uh, these two groups people are from different sides and they have different uh, like nationalities. This kind of additional information are not captured in our current ontology. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think also maybe that those extra details would not be in the caption. Like you might say in this one, you know, people rescue victims of the bombing, but they won't say carry them out on a stretcher necessarily. And if you can recognize the stretcher part, right? It's extra information that's not going to be in the caption. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I don't see any more questions and we are out of time. Uh, Thank you, Manling, for this uh, wonderful talk. And uh, we have, I think we have a few more individual meetings. So we'll see you again in the individual meetings and group meetings. Thank you, everyone, for attending this talk. I think this is the last talk for this semester. Uh, we don't have any other NL seminars scheduled for this semester. So see you in the next time, hopefully in, this, in the next year. And Manling, see you in, in the individual meetings. Yeah, yeah. thank you.